the first draft pick on SmackDown last week was Bianca Belair. Yes. And they brought her out during the show. And <laughs> they go, oh, Bianca Belair. She looks way better in a dress than the WNBA's first draft pick, Caitlin Clark. <laughs> Well, she does. That's not a lie. Although that's subjective. I think she does. Okay. I agree. But <laughs> are they offended by what Caitlin Clark's been doing in the ratings? I mean, what was up with the dig? Uh, poor Caitlin Clark. The, the girl's about to take an $84,000 salary <laughs> to slave away on the WNBA courts for months on end. Probably get mopped up by the Las Vegas Aces <laughs> along the way. And she's getting buried on SmackDown. Ugh. I don't think we need to feel uh, too sad for her with the amount of endorsement money she's going to be bringing in. Isn't it amazing? She was making, God, what, probably 25 times the amount in college than she would be at her professional job with the WNBA. But uh, Do you hey, think you any know. of the draft picks tonight are going to get endorsement money? Who do you think is going to get drafted? Are we going to see a shakeup on Monday Night Raw tonight? Because we didn't get one on SmackDown, so I I don't know. I mean, the way things are going, it, it's possible, and here's why too. CM Punk could be drafted anywhere, and he won't be showing up for a while. He is technically, even though people who are hurt are not part of this draft, and we had Roman Reigns on Friday. For those of you who were hiding under a rock, who wondered why the Bloodline was drafted so low, they actually kind of patched that up a little bit on SmackDown with Paul Heyman trying to explain to Solo that Roman's pulled himself out and they don't know what they're going to be getting here with Tamatonga and all that stuff. So they kind of covered up some things that way. But uh, CM Punk is in the mix. I don't know about Giovanni Vinci. I have a, a bad feeling that he's going to be drafted back down to NXT. But you know what? I'll take that because I like Giovanni Vinci and I'd like to see them actually do something with him. Kevin Owens, I would love to see Kevin Owens or Randy Orton, even though it would break up their thing. I would like to see them drafted over to Raw. And you know what, Tom? They have not announced a lot for tonight. In fact, the only things that they have announced so far are the fact that there's a draft and there's a six-man tag with Andrade, Jey Uso, and Ricochet against Damian Priest, Finn Balor, and J.D. McDonough. But they have added an appearance by United States champion Logan Paul and... Again, if you want to kind of slowly ease things out of WrestleMania and try to figure out where you're at doing this draft, coming out of Backlash next week, Kevin Owens showing up on Raw, Randy Orton showing up on Raw to spoil Logan Paul being there and making Logan Paul very upset that he went to a different show and he's still got to deal with the old problems. You know, I don't think that that's maybe the worst idea in the world. Well, if SmackDown's an indication, it looks as if Kevin Owens or Randy Orton or one of them or perhaps both are headed towards a feud with the bloodline. So that would have to be well, short that's true, up. Because Orton's already over on SmackDown. So Yeah, you know, that yeah. would kind of have to be short up along the way. Uh, one interesting name that you didn't mention that I have not seen in a while that is listed here as available for tonight is one Braun Strowman mm -hmm. who I have been licking my lips, chomping at the bit, waiting for this guy to get back to action love me some braun Strowman. so i hope i hope he shows up tonight do you think and i guess he's listed so they're gonna go ahead and draft him but uh you know there's all that talk about the uncle howdy character possibly coming back aaron Ro eric rowan canceling independent gigs you know braun coming back i could see him being drafted and then kind of shelved for a while or, or maybe kind of quietly going away for a while until you figure out what you want to do there one of the interesting names to me on this list because of his size and because we don't really know how much he's advanced since the last time we've seen him on nxt television is odyssey jones who make he made his way up to the main roster he's been floating up there like Zion Quinn and Zia Lee were, but they have not done anything with him. So it's interesting that he is still prominently listed as somebody that could be drafted. I think also, too, Tiffany Stratton ending up on Raw. I could see them doing that, keeping Jade Cargill over on SmackDown, but I could see Tiffany Stratton maybe over on Raw as a, as a, a quote unquote shakeup, even though she hasn't been on SmackDown for all that long. 
Yeah, and if you notice, they haven't changed any of the titles. The title holders were protected in the draft, but we've seen this happen in the past where they schedule matches, title matches with people from other brands, that's and then what I'm thinking switch the belts. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking but, with Owens and Logan Paul is Owens showing up after getting drafted after Logan Paul cuts his promo. Then all of a sudden they conveniently draft Owens. He gets a one-on-one -on -one match in France and then, in theory, possibly takes that title over to, to Raw. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. They usually do a, some sort of shakeup when it comes to the title belt. But, uh, I mean, it'll be interesting to see. I would expect... Ilya Dragunov would get drafted to Raw tonight. Uh, or wherever I Gunther's going, I tell you. I, I think they would be more that direction, too. If Gunther somehow ends up on SmackDown, which I wouldn't think, I could see Ilya being drafted over there. Yeah, and I think it's time that you start moving away from the LWO and Legato being on the same brand. I think it's time to split them. Lashley, the Street Profits, B-Fab, the Final Testament, all up in the draft tonight. I think you want to move those groups away from one another. So, yeah, I think we'll, we'll see some more movement in the rosters this evening. Where we're not getting a whole lot of movement, unfortunately, Powerhouse Hobbs's right knee that was injured during last week's event uh, on uh, last week's AEW Dynamite in the main event when he challenged John Moxley for the IWGP World Championship. On um, this show last week, Brian Alvarez said that uh, Hobbs uh, was injured. Fightful Select is now reporting as well that the injury is pretty significant and Hobbs is not expected to return anytime soon. So that is really unfortunate because he's been a victim of stop and start pushes but again a guy that looks like Hobbs you always have that ability for him to come back and just start mashing people but the timing of it is is very bad obviously and all the best go as well to Julia Hart uh, because according to Fightful there are early indications that she she will require surgery on her shoulder so unfortunate for her as well too a lot of injuries taking place hopefully everybody can get healed very soon back to put a bow on this thing when we get back wrestling observer live back on the show mike center bb filthy town lawler here with you final segment brian alvarez we back on the show tomorrow surely tom what'd you call me shirley <laughs> do you believe in joe hendry I believe he exists. I can he does. give you that much information. Trying to get his song to number one across all streaming platforms and for purchase platforms. I don't know how else to say it now. I believe in Joe Hendry, which did hit number one today in the UK on Spotify and I believe iTunes. Wow. If this thing actually makes it to the end of the week, it will be played on BBC Radio 1 when they debut their weekly countdown this coming Friday. So if you if you really believe in TNA, if you really believe in Joe Hendry, folks, go out there, put in the work, do what you need to do. Just like New Japan has done with the best of the Super Juniors, uh, we have an addition. Dragon Dia is in from Dragon Gate, who replaces Rice Gate Taguchi, who went ass over Tea Kettle on his bicycle, tore himself up pretty good. He's going to miss the next couple of weeks. But, uh, Tom, I don't know if you had a chance to see the uh, blocks that were decided here, but uh, any early thoughts? Excuse me, Taguchi went, I'm going to say Keister yes. over Tea Kettle. Is that not his gimmick? Well, doesn't he have a formidable backside? Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.